Greetings one and all, and welcome to Teddy's Hit Parade. Today we have a very special video starring me. Hey, wait a second here. What's going on? What do you think you're doing here? Hey, first of all, this is my channel, not yours. Okay, and secondly, you're not starring in this video. You are you have a cameo appearance at best, okay? So just, you know, don't get too full of yourself. Check your ego, okay, pal? Seriously. Sorry, you'll have to forgive him. Sometimes he can be a little bit of an asshole. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Not Teddy's Hit Parade. Although Teddy was right about one thing, this is a very special video that we're bringing you today. And thank you, by the way, Teddy, for that uh, interesting intro. You went a little bit off script there, but... Uh, what can I say? You've been such a part of my life for so long, and I love you so darn much that I can't help but forgive you. Yes, uh, folks, Teddy has been a part of my life for a long, long time, pretty much my entire life, as you will hear me explain uh, later on in this video, and at which time you will see him in his uh, natural habitat, I guess you'd say. But uh, yes, for now, I thought I would uh, introduce you. It was about time to introduce you to Teddy, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't he cute? But yes, uh, as I mentioned, this is a very special video. I thought it was about time to bring you my room tour. Yes, a tour of my bedroom slash music room slash office. It's a package deal, what can I say? Uh, yes, you guys have seen parts of my room here and there over the course of this channel. Uh, you know, this corner, obviously, is the one you're most familiar with. And uh, you've seen, I've shown you my CD collection and my record collection through various uh, points in my channel's history. In fact, I'm, it's about time for me to do a new record collection video because my record collection's expanded quite a bit since I did that last video. And of course, uh, in the background of my Lunchtime with Tom live streams, you have seen the bookcases back there that have my books and DVDs on them. So I thought I would just do a, one video that kind of wraps it all up in a bow, so to speak, and uh, brings it all together, shows you where everything is in relation to everything else, just in case you guys might be curious about it and also to show you some little corners of my room that you otherwise would never see. But anyway, yes, I've been promising, or soft promising, I guess you'd say, this room tour video to you guys for at least a couple of months anyway. In fact, it was just about two months ago, and I can't believe it was two months ago already that I first filmed the walkthrough part of the room tour for you. But I, I finally decided to actually just this morning to refilm that part just to maybe hopefully tighten it up in terms of time to you know make it a little bit shorter so that the overall video isn't too painfully long. But then again, I realized that uh, as I recall, you guys don't mind necessarily having uh, these somewhat lengthy videos from me, which, you know, in that, if that's the case, then bless your heart. Thank you guys so much. And uh, again, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to subscribe to and watch my videos every week-ish that I put them out. It, it means a lot to me. I'm not a huge YouTuber by any means, but that makes me more appreciative of the subscribers that I have. So thank you guys again so much for subscribing, taking the time to watch and comment and enjoy my videos. And, but yeah, this is just kind of, this whole video is basically just a thank you for uh, doing this. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy this tour of my music room slash bedroom slash office. Yeah, whole lot of slashing going on here, isn't there? Okay, let's head on into the inner sanctum that is my bedroom slash music room slash office. And uh, let's go ahead and start with the office part of it, uh, just so that we can build suspense for the music room, because I know that's what you guys want to see, so I'm going to be naughty that way. Uh, the let's start out go ahead and start out on the back of my bedroom door is this poster commemorating the 50th anniversary of rock and roll i've had this poster on the back of my door since oh 2005 something like that very cool poster and a kind of an, an easter egg or a little secret of the poster is the background is made up of song titles the various uh noteworthy songs in the history of rock and roll and the songs do eventually repeat you know they, they aren't completely unique from top to bottom but uh yeah a very cool little uh bonus with this poster i i enjoy looking at it from time to time very cool poster and uh, then over here we have uh, my little menagerie of stuffed animals uh they all mean something to me to some degree uh the elephants that you can see here uh the f one in the front was uh, store-bought but the one in the back there, the tall one, was handmade by my mother for my sister. My sister loved elephants, especially baby elephants. So those are the, that's the meaning for those. And then, uh, of course, we've got the, uh, the minion and a Tinky Winky. <laughs> and then the 
teddy bear, the brown teddy bear. You probably can't see him very well because of the lighting. I will probably show him to you uh, in the outro of the video. This teddy bear has been with me since I was probably three or four years old. Yes, he uh, many years ago he required eye surgery because one of his eyes fell out. But uh, otherwise, and I th oh, I think he had to be uh, stitched up in his body at some point somewhere. So, uh, but otherwise, he's been with me faithfully all these years. So, yeah. And then we have uh, oh, because I am a loyal Red Robin customer, I had to buy their uh, their Robin stuffed animal mascot uh, when it was available. And a little rainbow uh, colored puppy dog was given to me by a friend and former co-worker. So that's a very special thing to me. And then uh, the little red fella here with the long ears, I don't know if you can see him there, that is the Noid. He was the mascot for an advertising campaign for Domino's Pizza back in the 80s and 90s. So yeah, very interesting little critter there. And then the dragon here, his name is Figment, as in Figment of the Imagination. And he was the mascot for an attraction at Disney World and, or excuse me, at Epcot at Disney World. I don't know if that attraction is still part of the Epcot Park or not, uh, the Land of Imagination or Journey into Imagination or something like that. But yeah, that's the story of uh, Figment there. So yeah, all very special animals in my collection here. And this here we have Exhibit A of my Star Trek fandom, a replica of the dedication plaque for the Enterprise D, uh, that uh, the original of which was on the set of uh, The Bridge on Star Trek The Next Generation. So, And this was produced by a company called the Franklin Mint way back in the 90s. Uh, this was back when they were in their heyday. The Franklin Mint still exists, but they're, they've kind of, they're way past their glory days. But yeah, this is one of those collectibles that I would not buy nowadays because it was, their uh, collectibles went for a premium back in the day. And this, that was when I was uh, had much more disposable income when I lived with my parents. So, uh, yeah. Wouldn't be buying that kind of stuff today. Wouldn't be able to justify the expense. And then this is a picture that was taken at an amusement park down in Southern California. Uh, I am on the right there. My sister is in the middle and my brother is on the left. In addition to the, the costumes, the picture is also, also authentic in the fact that it was printed on a metal plate as uh, pictures were done way back in the very early days of photography, before they had photographic paper. So there's a trivia note for you in case you didn't uh, know that little fact about the history of photography. I'm just full of education today, aren't I? Anyway, uh, this is the uh, uh, Rhino Records calendar that you have seen in the background of my lunchtime videos. And then I thought I'd go ahead and show you in my closet, which I partially cleared out uh, beforehand so that I could uh, have easy access to show you everything. Uh, first of all, the staple of any closet, which is clothes. Aren't I stylish? Anyway, uh, and then my shoes, uh, ditto for the stylish comment. And then uh, one thing that my brother is so good at is maximizing space, you know, using whatever amount of obscure uh, cavernous spaces you have for storage of some sort. And yes, these shelves were again custom made by my brother. And up on the top, we see a few binders full of collector cards from uh, mostly Star Trek, but a couple other things, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't think they do the collector card thing much anymore. It's kind of a lost art, so to speak. But the rest of the shelves are filled with comic book boxes. Yes, this is what is left of my once vast comic book collection. Uh, that was a kind of a phase that I went through. Uh, and I may actually be thinning out this collection even more. Uh, I'm kind of getting the urge to just because I cannot remember the last time I opened any of these boxes and read any of my uh, comic books. Uh, most of them are Star Trek, which those I will keep probably. And then uh, these two storage bins here, the one on the right is full of miscellaneous crap. That's why it's not opened. Uh, but this one, uh, mostly empty CD cases. Yes, I, I always tend to keep a stash of those on hand. And yes, yet another uh, empty wooden CD crate. Um, this one emblazoned with a different long gone record store in the Eugene area. The Record Garden, may it rest in peace. Yeah, it's been gone for, oh gosh, cl close to 20 years now, I think. And then, yes, of course, the infamous stash of mystery CD grab bags from Skips. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this stack will be enough to carry my bargain bag feature through the end of 2021. So yes, over the course of the next year and a half, these stacks will be slowly shrinking their way down. So yes, uh, enjoy, enjoy bargain bag while it lasts, folks. Yeah. And then uh, exhibit B of my Star Trek fandom is some of the uh, 
starships from the various series. And these are not actually model kits. They were produced by a toy company, so they were they were packaged fully assembled. I am not a model model kit builder. I tried them once and failed miserably. Uh, so yeah, those were the those are the kind of models that I buy. Uh, and then behind the Romulan warbird here, you see the packaging for the collectible set of the original series uh, crew Star Trek figures from Playmates Toys. And then here we have the aforementioned Enterprise D from the Next Generation. And that was also, of course, a, a Playmates uh, toy model as opposed to a real model. And then here's my column of DVDs. Uh, got the Star Trek series on the top, and the um, inserts for these cases were produced by a fan online and uh, offered for free download on his website. He did similar cases for all sorts of sci-fi, fantasy, genre properties. And yeah, as you can see, they make a very, very cool mural effect when uh, placed side by side. And then from Star, Star Trek, we transition into other TV shows, uh, primarily sci-fi. And then other shows of various types. My Showtime series here, Shameless and The United States of Tara. That was an interesting show. It ran for only three seasons. But yes, Tara was a mother who had uh, multiple personality disorder. So yeah, if you guys like TV shows with a psychological bent to them, uh, you might check out The United States of Tara. That was an interesting show. Then we have uh, Queer as Folk, the complete box set there, and moving on to sci-fi movies, uh, Star Trek, Star Wars, Back to the Future, uh, Indiana Jones, which no, is not sci-fi strictly, but you know, same kind of stuff. Then other sci-fi and uh, fantasy and superhero and other movies. Moving on into LGBTQ and comedy movies, and then down to my music-related uh, movies and uh, documentary series, uh, whether scripted movies or documentary movies, and so forth. And then moving on to the uh, books cover the other two columns of this these bookcases. Uh, just all sorts of various kind of things mixed or lumped together, mostly by size because the shelves have to be adjusted accordingly, but more or less by subject, kind of. Uh, I've got, as you can see, a bunch of Star Trek Star Wars uh, type things and my DVDs kind of spill over onto this shelf as well and some other books and yet more Star Trek collectibles well as well as Star Wars collectibles uh, yeah he yeah, the tribbles here um, they, they are advertised as talking tribbles because yes they had batteries inside them so that when you squeeze them they made the triple sound uh, but the batteries these things are so old the batteries inside them are probably long dead uh, but as you can see, the uh, manufacturer was kind enough to put uh, ventilation slots on the sides of the box so that they won't suffocate to death. But what, what can I say, you know? And then uh, a little overspill of uh, CDs, the uh, free CDs that I will be trying to get rid of in some way, kind of spill over here. And then we have more books. Yeah, just uh, kind of jumbled, jumbled together, some reference, mostly reference because Yes, I do have a handful of novels, but uh, I'm not much of a reader, so I don't know why I have novels, but yes, I have them. And uh, some more music reference books down here. And yet some more. Then we have uh, my magazines that I've decided to keep and collect, including the entire run of Star Trek the Magazine, the official magazine. It ran for four years, five years, and then... Uh, This box houses some miscellaneous uh, CD-ROM and DVD-ROM discs for my computer, various applications. Then the chargers for my camera and light. As you can see, my light uh, stand, my camera light on the tripod here, and well, as well as my tripod for my camera. And then this, uh, yet another Star Trek uh, thing. This is another example of something I bought back in the day but would not be able to buy now. Actually, the poster back in 1991, 92, when it was sold, I think I only paid $25 for it, which, I don't know, might be 50 bucks nowadays around that. But the framing is what was expensive on this. And yeah, we had it framed back in, back when I got the poster. So and we've lugged it in the two or three times we've moved since. And it's managed to stay intact. So, yeah. And then, yes, we have my uh, listening station from Skips. One of my most prized collectibles, as you can see. And back there we have the uh, three foot by three foot uh, album cover stuff. I'll probably show these to you at some point. I've got like four or five of them stacked there. I don't have room on the walls to put them. 
And then this is the view outside my office window. And I may have complained about, uh, you know, being stuck at home quarantined and stuff. And I really didn't have a right to because look at this view, honestly, when I'm working at home on my computer. Uh, that is the view that I have outside my window, so it could be a lot worse. I could be looking at a concrete wall or something, so I really don't have much right to complain. But uh, yeah, down here is my computer tower. I do not have a laptop. I only have a desktop, so... And then my monitor, obviously. And then here is another cool music-related poster. As you can see, uh, cassette spines, a kind of a mural of cassette spines, most of them from the 80s, so yes, that very much speaks to me, I guess you'd say. And the uh, CD rack here with uh, the old CD World logo. And then you can see the uh, thing that I showed off way back. Oh gosh, it's been a long time ago. A LP record with this little uh, sign emblazoned on it. Uh, Music is what feelings sound like. And then various other desktop items. Now, back when we first moved in to this house, and for the first several years we lived here, this used to be two separate rooms. Uh, yes, the part that I just got done showing you used to be an office, and uh, the doors to the office were where the bookcases are now. And this closet was not here originally. The closet used to be, yeah, where the, uh, this was the dividing line between the two rooms. And so I am basically standing right now in what used to be my closet. So yeah, this is where my closet used, uh, used to be. And this part of the room was my bedroom. And Yes, it was my brother, the same brother that multiplied by my uh, CD storage space is the one that converted this, uh, these two separate rooms into my suite. So yeah, he is incredibly handy with the tools, I'm telling you. And this is the chair that I sit in when I watch uh, TV or movies or Blu-rays or DVDs or whatever, or sometimes when I just sit and listen to music and don't want to do anything else. And uh, yeah, very comfortable chair. And this throw that I have uh, behind it, it was hand knitted by my sister. And so yeah, it's very, very, it's comfortable. It's of course, another memento of my sister. And uh, yeah, on those cold winter nights when uh, I need to cuddle up under something, I throw this over me and it's kind of like getting a hug from my sister. So yeah, what can I say? I'm such a sentimental fool, aren't I? But yes, this is my wall OCDs. <laughs> Uh, 2,800-ish and counting. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, my, my entertainment center here, my, my TV and my uh, turntable here is a Marantz turntable and a Yamaha 5-disc CD changer. And this is a uh, standalone CD recorder, which used to get a lot of use when I used to make a bunch of mixed CDs. I don't make mixed CDs very much anymore, so it's gradually becoming obsolete. I may eventually get rid of it, but not yet. And my DISH uh, TV receiver. I honestly don't watch a whole lot of TV in my room, really. So and I got a Blu-ray player and VCR DVD and my Yamaha receiver, which everything is hooked up to. And then uh, the sound comes through these two ELAC bottle speakers. Uh, yes, I don't have room on the floor for a subwoofer, so but these little speakers put out a surprising amount of bass. I'm telling you, it's, it's impressive. And I've got a few, uh, I've got six Funko Pop figures here, three there, and three there. Uh, two of the six were courtesy of a very, very good friend of mine who was looking to get rid, get rid of some of his Funkos, and he asked me if I wanted them, and I said yes. So, And this little uh, cabinet is one of two identical ones that I got from Skips going out of business sale. And these are compilation CDs, home burned uh, mix CDs that I just don't yet feel like getting rid of the actual CDs of and, uh, you know, just leaving them on iTunes as iTunes mixes. I still want to hang on to the CDs. And then these are video CDs. And I may talk about video CDs at some point. They are basically a, an early kind of, an early form of DVD. They were very popular in Asia. Uh, and they, you know, they produce video, but they are done on the same media that CDs or music CDs are done on. So yeah, it was a very interesting technology. Uh, look it up at some point. It's it's kind of a kind of interesting history. And then over here we have uh, my rock and pop CDs, alphabetical by artist, starting with A, and uh, go down to the L's down here at the bottom here. The L's continue on into the M's. Uh, down on the on the the crossover bridge or whatever you call it here, and then continuing with the M's down to 
the Z's, which are right here. Yeah, and that ends the uh, the most all or mostly vocals, and then the other main section is all or mostly instrumentals. That's how I have my CDs divided. Uh, not divided into genre like uh, rock and country and R&B and stuff. I just, uh, genre lines don't mean that much to me, so I just put them all together. And then, yeah, from here on is my uh, mostly instrumental, all or mostly in instrumental, jazz, classical, new age, etc. And down here are the CDs from the last bargain bag. Uh, they sit here for the two weeks and uh, after I upload the video, and if nobody wants them, off they go to Goodwill. And then right here are the CDs from the new bargain bag that I uh, haven't listened to yet or, are, or am in the process of listening to. And they sit in there until I film the next bargain bag video where I recap what I heard. And then this little column here is compilations, uh, sorted by title, uh, first grouped, kind of like my main CDs, uh, all or mostly vocals, and then A to Z uh, by title, and then all or mostly, mostly instrumentals. And then down here are the rest of my music-related DVDs, this is mostly concert or music video or uh, artist-specific biographies or, uh, uh, excuse me, documentaries. So that's basically what's on that shelf. And then we have on this cabinet uh, soundtracks for the first oh, two-thirds and then holiday music for the bottom third. So, yeah, that's basically my... And uh, this, <laughs> these are the CDs that I recently acquired and have yet to listen to. Yes, this is from my Portland trip and recent freebie hauls from House of Records and a few little uh, multi-buys from Epic Seconds from like the $1 section or the $2.50 section and whatnot. So, yeah. And then this is where I have my uh, the holiday CDs that I have not listened to, the ones that I've gotten in my bargain bags and whatnot, is what's in here. So, yes, that is my music collection. Oh, and uh, exactly the last piece of my music collection. Comedy and spoken word is what's down here. And I also have a few odds and ends. Uh, this little box has some archive CDs, some mix CDs that I don't feel... Uh, space is a consideration, so if it's something I'm not crazy about having a, an actual jewel case for, I just put it in here in a sleeve. And then this, uh, down here I have um, blank CDRs, as well as some uh, paper envelopes for CDs if I need them as well as my uh, CD Walkman. So when the power goes out, this is what I can listen to CDs on. So this came in very handy during uh, Snowpocalypse 2019. Absolutely. And then we have the entirety of my cassette collection. I've got, oh, maybe eight cassettes here, including my most treasured, I think, uh, the Weird Al Yankovic Gump cassette single, <laughs> sent to me by, by a very, very good friend. I already had it on CD, but hey, it was tremendously thoughtful of him to send it. Yes, the sleeve has seen much better days, but uh, just the sentimental value of it, the, the, the friendship value of it, I will never get rid of it. And then we have a uh, cassette player. Actually, it's also a cassette recorder. So yes, this is the only thing that I have that plays cassettes. I need to rearrange stuff because that thing fell down. The Gump cassette single is not behaving itself. So... So yeah, that's it. And then, well, what I'm standing on is the other amazing prize position that I have from Skips. Of course, the big rug that I got from the, the, the floor mat from Skips. Amazing, wonderful piece of uh, treasured memorabilia from Skips. Then we have... Um, <laughs> this phone was actually at uh, my workplace. We moved uh, our office from one location to another few years back and uh, this was on the back bottom shelf of a cabinet the f it doesn't work it wouldn't have worked anyway at the office anymore because all the phone lines are digital and so I asked hey what's gonna happen to this can I take it home and they said sure so it serves absolutely no practical purpose whatsoever but it's a cool little collectible and uh, this some pictures of my sister during one of her visits to it's either the San Diego Zoo or the San Diego Wild Animal Park. She loved animals. She just loved animals, as you can see from the joy on her face, talking to the birds. So, yeah, having that right beside my bed is uh, very comforting. And then the rest of my uh, music-related books are over here. Some of these, uh, you know, most of my uh, music books are reference or just browse-worthy books, sort of. And then we have my record collection. 
Yes, uh, my record collection has grown considerably since I did my record collection video, which was way back in the first year of my channel. And it's actually overspilling onto a third shelf here. And then another, yet another empty CD case. Uh, yes, if I end up getting rid of, uh, if anybody wants a lot of the uh, giveaway CDs that I have, if you get enough, you might actually receive an empty CD rack along with them. And uh, then we have the few uh, CD box sets that I have right here, as well as my small collection of 45 RPM singles. Yeah, I don't have very much of those. And then here, this is where uh, my Star Trek figures, or, or what my Star Trek figures used to be housed in. I got rid of a lot of them just because I wanted some place to put the memorabilia from my Weird Al uh, concert, the ridiculously self-indulgent, ill-advised vanity tour. Uh, memorabilia is now housed in this case. Uh, it's very, very cool, and it used to be this cabinet actually used to be way back in the corner where my CD listening station is now. And it used to have the Star Trek figures in it, so yeah. Did a major uh, rearrange uh, a few months back. And uh, yeah, all the memorabilia, as I said, from the concert, and then the accordion packaging that Weird Al's uh, Complete Works box set came in. And down on the bottom shelf, you can't see it, but that is where I have an accordion, an antique accordion that my grandfather owned. I don't know if it was if it's particularly valuable. I think it was one that was actually kind of mass produced, as mass produced as things were back in the '30s, '40s. But uh, yeah, cool little uh, memento from the family. And then this is the view outside of my bedroom window. So yeah, as as I said, yeah, I could uh, don't really have much of a reason to complain about being stuck at home, quarantined most of the time when I've got views like this out my windows. And yeah, just uh, no, very little road noise, almost no road noise. And the chirping of the birds is just amazingly relaxing. So, yeah. Oh, and then of course, I, I guess this is a good way to kind of round out the video, is to bring it back to uh, what you normally see, the little corner that uh, I do my videos in. And hiding behind me is yet another uh, CD rack. <laughs> this one I used to, it just has a few um, empty cases that I use as spares for CDs I get rid of. So yeah, if, if I'm getting rid of CDs that are in good cases, I swap them out into lousy cases so I can keep the good cases. So yeah, I'm cheap that way, what can I say? Well, that'll do it for this long-awaited, by some, I hope, tour of my music room slash bedroom slash office. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so that you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and healthy out there, everyone. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.